In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to run the perfect brainstorming exercise that lasts only 10 minutes and can solve almost any problem. It's a perfect replacement for meetings that go on forever and ever and ever, and it's, it's super simple. Have you ever been in a meeting that seemed like it was going on forever and ever and ever and ever and you know you came together to solve a problem or come up with ideas but you left feeling like oh god that was so pointless and you know actually the end of the meeting was we're just going to have another meeting well that's normal because team dynamics are pretty broken and meetings generally feel pretty frustrating and one of the reasons for that is there's just no systems and structures for getting things done for actually running these types of meetings. And in this video, I'm going to try to show you one. It's a brainstorming exercise for coming up with ideas as a team, but coming up with ideas as a team without speaking to each other and without unstructured, open, messy discussions. I'm going to show you how to bring a one hour meeting down to just 10 minutes. And I really, really hope you like it. Now, while you're watching this video, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, let me know down below. I will answer them, which we answer pretty much every comment we get. So thank you so much. So do write them down below, pause the video. Go write it down below if you have any questions and let's jump into the video. Today, I wanna to show you just one simple exercise that's built for doing nothing but brainstorming and helping you figure out which ideas sort of in a room are the best ideas so you can just move on. Okay, so let me show you what happens if you don't use an exercise like this, but you get a group of people together who are trying to solve a problem. So let's choose a problem. Let's say we're trying to come up with a, hypoth a hypothetical scenario. Team, uh, a team is coming together because they want to think about how they might redesign the common area of their office to make it more collaborative, okay? So I'm gonna write that as a how might we, and if you don't know about how might we's, watch your channel because we do a lot of this kind of stuff, and how might we is just a good way to kind of formulate a challenge. So let's say the team is coming together and their challenge is to make the kitchen or make the common area more collaborative, okay? Make common area more collaborative. Okay, whatever. Okay, so I'm sticking that up here. So that's the challenge. You have to zoom in a lot to that's see that. Yeah, that's gonna be grainy. Zoom right in on that one, Callum. Okay, so the team comes together. Let's get them up on the board. So they're all sitting around the table. You know, we've got Dave, we've got Sarah, we've got Brian, we've got Laura, we've got Callum, we've got, I don't know, Dom. Now, here's what happens usually. They all get in the room together. It's like, hey, we wanna redesign the common area of our office. So let's do it. We have an hour. We have one hour to do this. Now, here's what happens. Here's, if you've been in a meeting before, you'll, you'll know what's about to happen. So Dave says, and I'm, while I'm going through, I'm gonna actually give them names. Uh, Dave. So they've got one hour and these people are sitting around the table. So Dave says, all right, I've got an idea. What if we made like a library in the, in the collaborative area? So like we're talking about the kitchen, what if we put up a library of all the books that we like? And then Laura's like, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, what if we also had some, like some bean bags? What if, a, and then like Tim is like, oh cool. Yeah, we could also, um, you know, why, why don't we have like a kind of open plan kitchen thing? Um, and Rachel's like, hey, we could also have like a Nintendo Switch so we could play Mario Kart together. This is gonna be a great way to get, you know, people to come together. And they're, they, they're all valid ideas. But what happens is they're now in an open conversation, right? They're all saying stuff. They're all saying these ideas. And maybe people are taking notes. Maybe someone's writing stuff down, but everyone's taking notes differently. And what happens even in this simple situation where they have a fun task to actually come up with ideas, still at the end of the meeting, if they're managed to get to an endpoint at one hour, all they have is a bunch of ideas and nothing really to execute on. And actually, you know, Sarah has already forgotten what Rachel said. 30 minutes ago. Rachel also forgot what she said 30 minutes ago. This is not an optimal way to share information. This is not an optimal way to brainstorm. So what I wanna show you is how to do the same meeting much more efficiently. In fact, instead of one hour, we can get it down to 10 minutes. Maybe you have 15 minutes, but I wanna show you a really great way to turn a messy meeting where you're trying to come up with some ideas into something a lot more structured. And to do that, we're gonna use an exercise called 10 for 10. Maybe he'll put tens in my hands. 10 for 10, okay? So you're gonna have 10 top ideas. Oh, you know what? Another problem here, just related to that, 
is that yeah, let's say they have like 50 ideas coming out of this session. People can only remember about five or six, but no one really knows what things should be executed because there's no priority. When you use 10 for 10, you're gonna have a prioritized list of 10 ideas that you're gonna be able to run through by the end of the exercise. Now, since we're not gonna do a normal AJ and Smart Style video, it's just me in the room. We're not gonna show you how this workshop works like by doing some B-roll. I'm just gonna describe it to you as best I can. But this is a really, really, really simple exercise, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is, the most important thing is you're gonna choose a facilitator, okay? So you never do a meeting without a facilitator. It's just crazy, okay? So Sarah's the facilitator, okay? Sarah's gonna facilitate this workshop. And how it's gonna work, is Sarah's gonna give everyone, first of all, she's going to turn like the challenge, the thing that's in the meeting name, okay, the meeting name might be called kitchen redesign. She's gonna stick up on the wall, hey, this is what we're working on. We're working on how might we make the common area more collaborative. Let's just remind everyone in the room, this is what we're working on. Then she'll give everybody a block of post-its. So I'm gonna get a block here. She'll give everybody a block of yellow, square sticky notes. I guess I shouldn't say post-its because I'm not like, you know, getting any money from them. Sticky notes. Okay, so Sarah gives everyone a block of post-it notes. The next thing she does is says, hey, everyone has five minutes. That's five minutes and using, this is a time timer. It's a great way to, you know, that everyone in the room can see how much time is left. Everyone's got five minutes to write as many ideas as they can, one idea per post-it, in legible handwriting without discussing with anybody else. This means that Rachel and Tim and Amr, Laura, Sarah, Dave are all alone, sitting at the table but not speaking, writing ideas, one idea per post-it. So for example, if I was sitting at this page, uh, at this table, I would be writing, oh, okay, so um, library. Hmm, okay, so I also want, I think we could have a, Large, common table. Okay, maybe I'll also have, I think we could have a Mario Kart. Okay, so what I'm doing is just writing one post-it, uh, one idea per post-it. So at the end of the five minutes, every single one of these people will have a pile of ideas. They'll just have a pile of post-its with ideas written on them. And now the facilitator is gonna say, hey everybody, you now have one minute to choose your favorite 10 ideas from your pile of ideas. So for me, this would mean looking through all of my ideas and just choosing 10 that I think are the strongest and I throw all the rest of them away. Still, no one has shared any ideas with anyone else. Everyone's just working alone. So you've just got your own 10 ideas and you haven't shared them with anyone yet. The next step is super, super simple. All everybody does, everyone on the team, at the same time, gets up and sticks their post-its onto a whiteboard or onto a wall, it doesn't matter. It sticks their 10 chosen post-its. So in this case, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There'll be 60 post-its on this whiteboard. And by the way, as I said, we usually have B-roll for this, but it's a week where we just need to do a lot of videos. So whatever, you just have to imagine it. So I'm sure you have a lot of B-roll for this. Maybe you can even find it, um, <laughs> whatever. So at the end, you have 60 post-its on the wall. They are not categorized. And yes, there are duplicates, but it doesn't matter, okay? It does not matter. So let me just recap what's happened so far. Everybody has spent five minutes writing as many ideas as they can on individual post-its without discussing. Then everyone chose 10 that they specifically think are the strongest of their piles. And then they stuck them all up onto a wall or a whiteboard, doesn't matter. Just stuck, stuck them all up together randomly. Remember, these post-its are now anonymous. They're all mixed together. Nobody knows you know, that this is Dave's idea or that this is Laura's idea, that this is Amr's idea. And still there's been no discussion and the workshop's just been going on for like six minutes, which is really cool. Okay, so the next step gets exciting. Next step, Sarah gives every participant, including herself if she's part of it, 10 dots and asks them to spend three minutes voting on which ideas they consider to be 
the most interesting solutions to this challenge. So they're not voting on which ones they think will definitely work and which one everyone will like, it's which one they subjectively think are the best ideas. Now, here's the voting rules. They can vote on their own ideas. If they really like something, they can put like four or five votes on it if they want. So, you know, if these were my ideas stuck up on the wall here, blah, blah or not my ideas, but if these were some examples of ideas and I'm like, oh, I really, really like this one then I could put like three or four voting dots on it. It doesn't matter. So without any discussion, people are voting and reading and voting and reading and voting. And that's basically it. And after the three minutes are done, everyone should get rid of all of their dots. And now the facilitator, Sarah, arranges these voted ideas in order of priority. So the one that has the most votes is on top. So this one has like five votes. This one, these ones have four, this one, you get the idea. So basically you reorder everything that's on this board in order of which ideas were the most interesting. So the goal here is just to get to a sort of a top 10. So you can ignore, pretty much ignore every vote that's below, oh, by the way, wait, now it's 10. So you can see it's like going to be 10 post-its at the end. So you just try to take off the top 10 voted post-its, put them in order of, you know, this was the top voted, maybe there's even two top voted, it doesn't really matter. This has five votes, this has four votes, this has three votes. It's just a simple prioritized overview. So in the end, the goal is really that the team can see Okay, so these are 10 ideas that the whole team thinks is interesting. These are, you know, what it's doing is replacing the conversation with a visual output. So instead of everyone talking and talking and talking for an hour, in the space of 10 minutes, you now have a visual overview of which ideas the team thinks could be the best ideas. And you know what? The meeting could end there and you could have a look at how to execute these things. Maybe that's not the best ending to the meeting. There's other workshops you can add on top of this to really decide how to execute. But the goal of this meeting, the goal of this exercise that I want to show you is there are other ways to come up with ideas without speaking to each other. No one has spoken to each other yet. And now they all have a visual overview of which ideas could be the strongest candidates. That's a better starting point for the meeting in the first place, you know? This could be the point where the meeting starts and we say, okay, so these are sort of the 10 big ideas we have. Let's think about what ways we might execute them or you move them into another exercise for prioritizing, which we'll, we'll show you another time. And that's 10 for 10, a really simple note and vote style exercise, which involves nobody on the team talking, which requires just one person to volunteer as the facilitator, which requires pretty much nothing besides some sticky notes, some dots and some Sharpies. That's really it. I hope showing you this in this style, which is quite rough for the AJ and Smart style, helped you to understand how to run a simple brainstorming exercise. This is my favorite brainstorming exercise. We use this all the time at AJ and Smart, and I hope you love it. So if you liked this type of video, this type of workshop video, more hands-on practical video, do let me know in the comments. I want to know what types of videos you want to see us making here at AJ and Smart. We try a lot of stuff. We're trying to see what you like best. So if you do like this video and you do enjoy this content, make sure you also check us out on LinkedIn. Make sure you also check out my podcast every Monday. It's called Jake and Jonathan. There's so much stuff out there. There's so much workshop information. Being a workshop consultant, that's literally my job. I have so much to tell on this topic if you're interested. So LinkedIn, the AJ and Smart page over on LinkedIn, my podcast, Jake and Jonathan, our Instagram for daily vlogs of us working with clients, that kind of stuff. If it interests you, make sure you check it out. Finally, help the YouTube algorithm gods find our videos by hitting like, leaving a comment and subscribing. Thanks so much for watching it. Thanks for supporting AJ and Smart and see you next week.